Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Garage Life. For some reason, this Subaru has been a massive money pit in recent months. And I'm on wheel bearing number three. I've done the front two, and now I'm on to the driver's side rear. The rear wheel bearing is pretty bad. Definitely needs replaced. It's uh, got some pretty good wobbling going on. So I'm gonna show you how to replace the wheel bearing on your Subaru. The process is pretty much the same for all four corners. They're all just the four bolt hub. The process of it, the theory, is not that difficult. But sometimes these can be really stuck. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to get it out. So let's get started. If you don't know if you have a bad wheel bearing, if you're hearing tire noise or some kind of woo 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 kind of noise, but you don't know what it is, um, if your wheel bearing is really bad, you'll be able to move your wheel back and forth. It's kind of hard to see in here, but I can actually wiggle this wheel back and forth and there's a slight click. And that's how you know if you have a bad wheel bearing. It should not move or click if you have a good one. So that's how I know this wheel bearing is toast. All right, so first thing is obviously to remove the wheel. Next, we're gonna remove the rear brake caliper. Make sure your parking brake is off. And to get to the upper caliper bolt, it's kind of tricky, but it's kind of through this control arm area. You need a 14 millimeter socket and an extension to get to it. Uh, holy shinola. There's the top one. The other caliper bolt is even harder to get to. Ow! God damn it! I hate this car so much. I did the same exact thing when I changed my rotors. Oh my god. The caliper can now be removed, then the rotor. Now we're gonna spray this hub really good with some penetrating oil. If you get any on your parking brake shoes, you're gonna wanna clean them off with some brake cleaner, but you really wanna make sure that you saturate it to make sure it's easier to get off. We can now remove the axle nut. You will need a 32 millimeter socket to remove this. If you need one of these, I'll have a link in the description down below so you can pick one up. An impact gun is really the only way to do this, so just get it on there and give her hell. Here's the real fun part. We're, on, we're underneath the car on the back side of the hub, and here are the four bolts holding on the wheel bearing that we need to remove. Kind of tricky to get to, um, but they are right there. You need a 14 millimeter socket to remove them all, and uh, might need some penetrating lubricant, and uh, just get these bad boys off. We're gonna spray this with some penetrating oil again to make sure it's nice and saturated because these things can be really stuck. Like I said before, if you get any penetrating lubricant on your brake pads, just clean them off with brake cleaner once we're finished. Huh, yeah, that one loosened up pretty good. Three. Broke loose all four. All right, now here's where the skill's coming in. I'm going to hold the camera with one hand and loosen a bolt with the other. Yeah, they're really not that bad to get to. If you have a wobble extension, you can pretty easily get to all four. It's really not that bad. I'm also gonna spray the Wheel bearing in here, make sure it can slide out of the axle pretty good. And now's the fun part. Grab yourself the biggest hammer you can find, even possibly an air hammer or a slide hammer if you have it. You just need to beat the ever-loving crap out of this thing to make it come off. Uh, I don't think you can do it back here, but what I was able to do on the front is take an air hammer and kind of rotate this around and I was able to get on one of the ears and zip it off, but with this drum set being back here, you kind of can't. So. I'm just gonna hit this with a hammer as much as I can to break it loose. So I got the wheel bearing off, but it's still attached to the parking brake assembly, so 
Now we just, just need to separate the wheel bearing from this backing plate. Boom! And just like that, you got your old crappy wheel bearing out. Let's see if you can pick up on this audio. Oh, yeah, that was a pretty bad wheel bearing. It should not sound like that at all. Now, it's not required, but for best practice, it's a good idea to put some anti-seize on here so that the next time you go to do this, it's not as stuck, and this will also help with getting it on. All right, so now we'll put our parking brake assembly back up in there. And the wheel bearing only goes on one way. So before you put this on, take the parking brake assembly off and make sure you can line up the bolt holes. I'm pretty sure it's just slightly different and it will only properly fit one way. Get it in there and then go back on the back side and install your four bolts. Okay, we got all four bolts holding the hub on. Now we'll reinstall our axle nut. Get your impact and give it like 30 ugga uggas. And these don't take cotter pins. What you need to do to lock it in place is get a screwdriver right here at this notch and hit it and you'll notch the nut right here so it can't back out. For this you can use a flathead screwdriver or some kind of punch. Got everything back together. Now we're gonna clean off the brakes with some brake cleaner to get all that penetrating lube off. Now we'll put the rotor and caliper back on. We're pretty much done. All right, so that's how you do a rear wheel bearing on a Legacy. It's probably gonna be the same thing for a Forester and Preza and pretty much every Subaru of at least this kind of year. Um, really not that difficult. The most annoying part is getting those caliper bolts out. I hate taking that goddamn caliper off this thing. Um, yeah, now she's got her third new wheel bearing. I'm sure the one on the other side will go out in probably 15 minutes. And then uh, you'll see another video of me doing another wheel bearing. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it and learned something, and I'll see you next time. Hey, be proud of me. I didn't make any sexual comments that time. Should I be proud or sad?